Hey everyone, Justin here with Ripley, and we're back with another episode of Watch Talk. Also, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date on our latest video content. Unfortunately, Emily is feeling a little bit under the weather and won't be joining us today. But we have some important predictions to make. 2022 is coming to an end. 2023 is quickly coming up, and that means new watches. All right, well, before we get into this, uh, let's do the wrist check. Let's see what you got on today, Ripley. Well, it's the end of the year. We're thinking back to what 2022 was. It's the one Rolex I bought in 2022. Uh, Palm dial date just. I, I'm choice. sure at this point, everyone is sick of seeing it. Been wearing it nonstop. Yeah, I wouldn't have bought it if I thought I was going to get tired yeah. of it. But uh, yeah, leafy dial all full send Great for watch. me. Great uh, what about yourself? Uh, I'm going classic Rolex Explorer 2 white dial. My personal favorite among the white dial Explorer 2s. Yeah, it's nice. Like you said, it's classic. End of the year. Uh, it's a go-to. Just uh, And we're know. in winter. It's perfectly and, thematic. And we're in winter. I love it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know... Polar Explorer don't for need the... an excuse to wear it, yeah. so <laughs> I'll take any I get. Yeah, I mean, normally we don't get new... And traditionally, generally speaking, we don't get new Rolex releases until Basel World, or in this case, Watches and Wonders, which is in the early springtime. Right. But as we just saw with the Deep Sea Challenge, Rolex is not opposed to releasing things out of season. And to get the discussion started early, so, why not talk about what we're going to see next yeah. year? 2023, let's get our predictions going out. So today, we are talking about 2023 Rolex predictions. Well, considering we got none of what we expected in 2022, I think some of 2023 will be what we didn't see in 2022. I can see that. But there's also, 2023 is kind of an important year when we're talking about Rolex in general. Sure. A couple anniversaries, right. uh, namely the Daytona, 60 years. That's expected, right? 60 years. I fully expect them to do something. To what level? is kind of to be debated. But. Well, yeah, I mean, let's just talk about the Daytona as a whole. So 1963 is when it started. Right. Now we're coming up on 2023. That platinum ice blue dial with a chestnut brown bezel, that's been around for 10 years. That's kind of crazy to think. Yeah. And even this one here, the steel, uh, like the Panda, we've, it, it's 2016. So, you know, th yeah. this, is a been, this is a known quantity at this point. And also when you start looking at some of the other watches, I mean, even just here, you've got it, well, Yacht Master 2 is big, but look at it next to the Milgauss. It seems small compared to Rolex's other watches, so I could easily see the Daytona getting a big update. I could too. So, we talk about Daytona updates. What's in the realm of possibility there? What are we thinking could happen to an updated 60th anniversary Daytona? So, Rolex used to kind of trickle out the updates, so that, you know they'll give you the new one, but in something crazy, luxurious, and then kind of trickle it down through the ending in steel. Sure. They don't seem to be doing that anymore. You, you get a new watch, you get all of them at once. So right. I, I've noticed I, that. Yeah, I think if we do get one, it will be across the new range. Uh -huh. All of the Daytona will be updated. And so I'm sure there will be something in gold or platinum to celebrate the mm -hmm. anniversary, but then that would also mean we get a new steel. So... Yeah, I think that there could be something uh, with the green. Rolex likes green, especially in anniversaries, right? We've seen it on Submariner, we've seen it on the GMT. Maybe it's me just wishing this would happen, but I would love to see more like a green and white version, uh, a green dial stainless version. Um, I could see them incorporating green just because it's so Rolex. Um, and for me, that would be welcomed. Yeah, I mean, Rolex is for is as long as the steel Daytona has been around. It's either been had a white or black dial and right. silver, sure, whatever. But, There's a few you know, kind of like the Samariner, it's been black. But then, they, you know, they also kind of been teasing in green with like the Hulk. Mm -hmm. And so, I, yeah, I'd love to see some green kind of get added across the Daytona range. Yeah. I think this same watch, but swap the black out for green would look lovely. Oh, Maybe bump great. the case diameter up to fit the modern trends. Yeah. And Rolex has been dialing in their green ceramic color over the years with either the Sermit, the Kermit, the Hulk. So, right. you know, whatever. It's a uh, we're we're getting we're getting there. Yeah. I think it's it's very doable. Yeah, I think it'd look really good. I think it would look really good too. So what do you think about the bracelet? What about the possibility of adding a Jubilee bracelet well, to this the watch? The word Jubilee does is, you know, of the anniversary, that's literally what the actual word means. So I think if we're going to do a green, appropriate. Name, this watch with, in green, put a Jubilee on it, I think that'd look fantastic. I think yeah. that's a possibility. Yeah, I think that would look great. Okay, so we talked about the Daytona. Let's talk about the Milgauss. We seems like we've been talking about the Milgauss at the I, beginning of every year since I'm going to keep beating the Milgauss drum until Rolex either eliminates <laughs> it entirely or updates it. Yeah. We've been saying it year after year. It seems outdated given right. Rolex's other more modern watches. Uh, Anti-magnetic watches is across the board is becoming more of a thing. The fact that, that it's, its party piece sort of seems out of place. It hasn't had an update in years. Will it be discontinued? Will we see a new one? I'm gonna keep saying yes until we see otherwise, so. I'm gonna disagree with you on this one and say no, because I felt like I've been proven wrong so many times that I'd say it's 
It's possible, but for me, it's not the most likely. And watch, now that I said that this is the year that it will finally happen, which I would, I would be interested to see. But I'm officially going to say that this one is not on my likely list, although it is possible. One thing working in its favor of getting an update is it still has a 31 series movement. That's so true. it's been a minute. Yeah. We keep saying something with a rotating bezel, again, would be a great way to sort of bring mm -hmm. it back into the uh, kind of tool washer sure. collection. At that point, get a latch and clasp on it as well. Who knows if we'll see it? Probably not, because we're wrong every year about it, but I think we'll see a new Milgauss again, and I'll be wrong in the spring. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the Cellini. This is another interesting line, um, and the way Rolex has been treating it lately, right? It's pretty much gone, although they do have the moon face still, but there's not a whole lot of Cellini, and uh, really hasn't had a lot of attention. Do you see anything happening there, possibly bringing back some new models, changing things up? Yeah, I don't know. It's sort of always been kind of that weird overlooked collection, but the fact that they discontinued everything except the moon phase right. model, it seems like if you were going to just drop it, drop it entirely, it, the fact that it's sort of there almost as a placeholder is yeah. almost like I'd love to see it come back. Yes. If it does come back, I'd love to see it dramatically different than the rest of the catalog. Yeah. I think with the last generation, it was getting a little bit too similar to some of the more dressy looking Datejust or Oyster Perpetuals. If they do bring it back, let's do a non-circular case shape. I would love to see like an old, like the Prince's I would like that. Or, or something like this. Look at this. This is not your a Rolex this, as, as far as, yeah. yeah. This is a nice one. And I feel like kind of a little bit different where I think the last iterations of the Cellini are the ones that I have really been enjoying. I love those last designs. Um, the moon phase that they still have, I think is one of the best ones they've done. Um, but even the other ones that you know have been discontinued, I thought those are really beautiful watches and I was sad to see them go. Um, this is the portion where we're missing Emily because she is the Cellini girl and I know her input and she sent her uh, her predictions proxy and we were talking about this and she said that she would uh, like to see them bring back something crazy, some of the crazy Cellinis, some of like the cocktail size, or like you said, square case shapes, something that's like kind of out of the box where historically Rolex has kind of, that Cellini line has been their chance to do some of that stuff, like the prints and the, you know, some of these other really random pieces um, have found a home in the Cellini line and she would like to see that back and thinks it's a pretty good possibility. Yeah, and I agree with you. I really like the previous Cellini lineup, I, I thought that last generation was great, but it was just a little bit too similar. It was. So if you had a, every other Rolex watch, it's different, sure, but it's not different enough. It's still, we got a screw down crown, we got a self-winding movement. We got right. the, the Cellini, part of why I love it at going back through the archives is it's a collection where Rolex didn't have to have all of the hallmark traits of a Rolex. We didn't need the waterproof oyster case. We didn't need a self-winding movement. You can get much different designs. Look how thin this thing is. You yeah. know what I mean? That's a hand wind movement in there. Right. But like, you know, that's not something you're gonna be swimming in. I would love to see Rolex if they are going to keep the Cellini, let it be that thing that is an unapologetic dress watch sure. in solid gold or platinum, and then bring back some really, really thin, different shapes that right. someone could fill out their collection. So if they got their sports watch, they got their everyday watch with a date dress, they got their sub, whatever. Yeah. Here's a third option that would be sort of that weird spot and the fact that they only have the moon phase. They haven't deleted the Cellini landing page yeah. entirely. Something it is will there. happen. Yeah. I don't know if it's this year or next or... Sometimes something will happen. It's I'm calling the Cellini's just taking them intermission. It's okay. half time, we'll see okay. it return. Um, okay, well, moving on from there, can we talk about materials for a minute? Uh, this last year, Rolex just released the full titanium deep sea, right? And that was big deal. Rolex doesn't do very much in titanium. Um, do you think that we will see any uh, updated materials for the future, like maybe a different sport watch in titanium that's a little more accessible, um, or possibly even gold, like yellow gold on some watches that currently aren't offered on in yellow gold? What do you think about that? Yeah, so I mean, look, I, I think we're gonna see titanium play a greater role in Rolex's catalog, but they're not gonna give you exactly what you want. We're not gonna get that no date sub on an Oyster Flex in titanium. Right. Maybe many years down the line, but I think we'll slowly start to see it work through if we see it at all. Um, there is that titanium prototype Yachtmaster that's floating around on Ben Ainsley's right. wrist. Uh, so, you know, that seems to be a natural fit. And seeing the Yachtmaster 2 
incorporate this very lightweight, sporty material in a very purpose-built, sporty regatta timer design, that could be something cool. Yeah. But then we also have to look at Rolex as a brand. For years, they've been moving up market in terms of price and certainly in terms of ex exclusivity and notoriety. And so we're seeing a lot more luxurious executions of previous very, very tool-oriented watches. So people said for years, oh, the Explorer is going to be the last holdout of, you know, of the platonic stainless steel watch for oh sure and now we have a two-tone example we have right. a two-tone sea dweller right so i wouldn't be surprised to see that kind of work its way into other ones whether we see a solid rose gold yacht master on a instead of on an oyster flex on a matching gold bracelet again kind of recalling the original uh like 90s model which was in yellow gold or maybe a two-tone milgauss two-tone air king that would be a natural sure. fit okay. as well i could see a two-tone air king. um or if we do see titanium it'll be on something that is not it, it'll be something expensive and it'll be on something not obvious like you know a new generation of yacht master twos with a, a titanium version right. the yacht masters the uh, you know the expected iteration of titanium right we know the the prototype one is out there i'm going to go out on a very very long limb and say what about a titanium milgauss kind of taking two steps at the same time killing two birds with one stone we're getting the the new updated attention to the milgauss we're also incorporating titanium and in something that's a little more accessible i know it's out there this isn't by any means something that i expect to happen but I think it would make one a really interesting watch, and Rolex has been doing just enough kind of out of the box stuff that I haven't written it off completely. So I'm gonna put it out there as my, my thousand to one, my Hail Mary shot. It would be, be really interesting to see a titanium Milgauss. Oh, I think it'd be great. And it would also be that uh, that injection of relevance that would make people start caring about the Milgauss again, even if its party piece is so outdated. Right. With that in mind, I think if we do see a new Milgauss, especially if they do you know choose to trickle in titanium in that manner, it's gonna have a new movement that it's not gonna use the same cage. You know what I mean? I think it'd be strange to have a titanium case, lightweight with like a soft iron shell. Sure. Yeah, I think if they do that, it's gonna, alongside the titanium case, we're gonna see an entirely anti-magnetic movement. Right. Whether that's, you know, an evolution of the which, current 32 series, which is already quite anti-magnetic, or, you know, a whole new way, an expose of their latest technology. Sure. I think if we do see new Milgauss, it won't have that same old, Le old tech. Yeah, about. like like you said, the technology there uh, can stand for an update. Things have gotten a lot different, a lot better. Um, so if they do change that, you know, there's plenty of opportunity to update the ways of the technology and the anti-magnetic feature of it, um, which will probably all play into like one new solid watch. Well, lastly, I guess like any just general trends, there's obviously going to be new updates and additions outside of it. Sure. But like beyond the anything else, any just general trends you think are going to be keeping it? So one trend that I see with uh, not as much Rolex, but a lot of other watchmakers is the heritage collections, the nods back to the vintage pieces. Vintage watches, you know, they've had such a moment. They're they're such a big spotlight right now, which is great. I mean, I think it's so fantastic for, uh, you know, the community and the hobby um, as a whole. And you see a lot of these really nice pieces, so Omega, even Tudor. And, I mean, everyone kind of is releasing these, not just uh, like kind of a darker patinaed color, but full on older models that have been redone and re-released. Do you think that some, that's something that Rolex could do? I mean, they do it. Like you see some nods where you see like the red writing on the, the Sea Dweller, right? Is, you know, kind of a nod back to the styling of the vintage watches. Or you see the orange hand on the Explorer 2 um, mimicking the 1655 Explorer hand, but they haven't really like released like a, you know, so-called heritage piece. Do you think that that's something that they could do? Or do you think it's a little too far outside of them for I now? I think they're so driven on progress that they're always going to keep moving forward in their designs and let Tudor be the one to kind of pick up right. as they have been for Which the heritage like pieces. Yeah. But I think we will see them continuously dip into their back catalog and pull back these iconic little design elements to incorporate into thoroughly modern designs. Uh, I, and I think it's a way you have these models from Rolex that run for decades, half a century or more. And as models evolve and change, how does Rolex own a design language or own a design trait, they have to bring it back or evolve it. But 
I think, look at the orange hand on the, you know, the last two generations of Explorer 2 watches. That was a quirky, quirky thing from the first generation. Now it's something we all think is part of the Explorer 2 because they brought it back. They brought it back on a watch that looks nothing like the 1655, right. but they're owning that design element. Yeah. And so I could see them doing that with other things on, uh, you know, whether they bring back the quirky rotating bezel on the Milgauss, or bring back that weird sort of reverse dial for the yacht master where it's white with the black. Right. And, and, you know, something like that where if they do dip into their back catalog, it'll be in these small, tasteful design yeah. elements rather than um, a full on heritage piece or like, you know, a, yeah. a recraft edition type of thing. Yeah, I tend to agree and I like that. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Do you think Rolex will do something like that? Will they come out with like an old heritage piece? I mean, I know a lot of people would love to see that. I know people probably wouldn't as well. There's ones that, you know, would like to kind of leave the past the past, but let us know what you think. And also, which watch would they do? What would a Rolex heritage piece look like, right? They have so many great vintage watches from the past that, you know, narrowing it down is uh, is almost impossible. But I'm curious, what do you guys think that they would do? Yeah, would it be something super obvious like the Paul Newman Daytona, like play the hits? Or would it be kind of something a little bit off the beaten path, like a triple calendar or something like right. that, where it's like, that's a whole other category yeah. of timepieces, yeah. but one that could look really, really yeah. cool, especially if they brought it back with the Cellini collection where it didn't have to be 100 meters water resistant right. and all of that. Yeah. One last thing. So we've talked about some predictions, some things that you know possibly can happen or likely, unlikely, but I wanna know what would you like to see? Not necessarily what you expect to see, but what would you like to see out of 2023 with Rolex? <sighs> I mean, that's hard I because it's, you almost want them to surprise you. You like, I want to be surprised. I almost want out of them something that I, we wouldn't expect, like the green left hand of GMT. I thought that was cool. I didn't right. think we needed more GMTs. I'm happy they did that. Right. Um, I want to see something from the Cellini collection. I okay. want to see something luxurious. Rolex can obviously do something very, very sporty and they're expressing that with like the deep sea challenge. But I also want them to, if they want to be a luxury watch manufacturer and like move up market as they have been with price, flex the other side of the muscles. Right. Do something in that solid gold case, bring back the triple like calendar. It. Yeah, okay, there we go. If that's what it is, bring back the triple calendar. Yeah, I could get on board and, with that. Yeah, solid gold Definitely. or platinum as part of the Cellini collection, whether it's, you know, like give it a star dial or yeah. something really really cool it can like be that. updated and yeah, yeah complicated rolex that. stuff just to show that they can also do that as well because from a it's manufacturing great. level they're one of the premier manufacturers and other than the sky dweller the yacht 2 there mm -hmm. isn't really uh complications is not what rolex right. does but that's not to say they haven't ever done it or they can't yeah. yeah so maybe a split second chrono just something yeah let's bring some complications i like it that's that's great i would love to see that as well <laughs> i love those old watches um i would just say that i want to see the green daytona i want to see some version of that green daytona green and white dial um something with the anniversary i just want to love green and watches is just a personal thing with me so you've already scored points there um it's rolex's color it's different enough and i, I don't know i just i'm envisioning it and i think it would be gorgeous and that's what I'm hoping to see from Rolex in 2023. If Rolex does a green steel Daytona, it is the, the poor retailers. They're just going to be overrun. <laughs> like we are, this one already trades like three times market. Yeah. It's that's going to be insane. Yeah. But to for a landmark anniversary like the 60th, I, I think it'd look fantastic. Yeah, absolutely, especially on a Jubilee. It's definitely <laughs> on a Jubilee. Um, okay, so well, that's ours, right? That's, yeah, yeah. That's what we want to see. But what do you want to see? You know. All predictions and realism aside, what would your dream Rolex release of 2023 be? Yeah, leave us a comment below. Let us know what you guys want to see from Rolex. I don't care how crazy. Those are the ones that I really like reading because you get some pretty good ideas. But leave us a comment below. Let us know what you want to see. What should Rolex do in 2023? I'm curious to read them. All right, well, that's the predictions from me and Ripley for 2023 Rolex. I think it's going to be a good year. Rolex has been surprising us, so I'm really excited to see what comes out. Um, so anyway, thanks for joining us, Ripley, and contributing as always. And until next time, you guys, uh, be well.